guys, Marcina here with Learning to Laser and well, this is what my face looks like. So, <laughs> so sorry it took me almost two months or a little over two months, <laughs> if we're being honest, to upload this video, but it's because I wanted to show you guys my face. Not that like there's much to look at, but um, still wanted to be able to just come on here and be able to show you guys in person and so that you can actually see the things that we are designing on the computer and what they look like in real life. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to set up this on the menu board in Lightburn. Um, in this video, I am going to show you guys how to do mitered frames. And then in the next video, we are actually gonna grab our materials, we're gonna put it all together and pop it in this bad boy and we are going to make us some cool frames. Now that we have our mini board set up and created, I wanted to show you guys how you can finish it off and make it look a little bit more polished with a frame. I personally love, love, love mitered frames. While I do like the farmhouse aesthetic, the one thing that I do not like on the farmhouse aesthetic is when people do the square frames. So I wanna show you how easy it is for you to be able to do a mitered frame with your laser. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these on the menu and I am just going to shift D on my keyboard. So I'm going to, I'm sorry, control D. I'm gonna hold down control and then press the letter D at the same time so that I can get a duplicate copy. I only need a copy of the background. I don't need a copy of the design for this particular step. So what I'm gonna do is move these over here just so that they're not in the way and we can focus on making our frame. First thing you wanna do is come over here to the offset shapes and we're gonna do an inward offset. Now the offset amount that you decide is 100% personal preference. In this case, I'm gonna go with a just under a half of an inch offset at 0.4, um, but you could make your offset really big or you could make it really small. It's really personal preference. It depends on how you want it to look when it is finished and assembled. We do not want to delete the object in this case, and we want to use a corner, corner style. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> and then we're gonna select okay. So now we have two shapes. We have our inward shape offset, and then we have our original outside shape. And what we need to do is combine these two shapes and make them into one in order for us to be able to manipulate them. So I'm gonna select the outside line, I'm going to press and hold shift on my keyboard and then I'm going to grab the inside line. Okay, so now I have both of them selected. Pay attention to these little marching ants here because they are going to change and it's a good visual indicator to know that you, what, you've done this next step correctly. So then you're going to go over here to Boolean difference and just press it. And as you can see, the little marching ants have changed. And now instead of having two shapes, we only have one, which is exactly what we want. So the next thing that we're gonna do is select our shape, control D on our keyboard one more time and move it right on over here. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but we just wanna make sure that we have a copy of this shape. So then we're going to go over here and we are going to draw a perfect square so that we can get a right triangle and be able to cut those mitered corners. On your keyboard, you're gonna to wanna to press and hold shift and then draw your square. And by pressing and holding shift, it is going to create a perfectly square shape. You wanna do that twice. So you want one that's little and then one that's kind of big. It really doesn't matter how big they are, but you do want them to be different sizes when you do it. And I'm just going to come over here and change the colors for these so that they are easier to view. Okay. Now what you wanna do is line up and it's really hard to do it from far away. So I tend to come in as close as I can and try to get it right there on the line. Perfect, okay. So in order to get it to be a triangle, we need to cut this shape and then we'll be left with just a triangle for the little square. So I'm gonna select the little square then I will press shift on my keyboard, left click, select the big square. And then I'm going to Boolean difference one more time. Bam. Now we have a perfect right triangle. And I'm going to control D on my keyboard so that I can duplicate it. So now that I have two right triangles. And we're going to come over here. And what I like to do, because I like to do things as quick and as 
fast as I can is I'm going to select my triangle and then I'm going to select my box. On my keyboard, I am going to hit the letter T. That is going to give me a top alignment, which you can also find right here. Then I'm going to hit the letter L. That is going to give me a left alignment. Oh, I don't think you can do. Oh, right there. Okay, so then you can align left right here using that as well if you don't want to use this keyboard shortcut. Now this obviously doesn't look like it's going to give me a mitered frame. So now we need to do the shape uh, mirror tool and we're just going to mirror the shape and move it around until it is cutting nine, uh, 45 degrees inside of our frame. Then I'm going to take the other one that I made over here, do the same thing, select the small one, select the big square, hit T on my keyboard. This time I'm going to hit the letter R for right, right alignment. And I am just going to manipulate and mirror my shape until I have it cut in there. And do you see that when I did the movement, it did move it. So you want to always, always check that. So I'm going to go in here again and I'm going to hit R and T. Boom, there we go. Check on this side, we're looking good over here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna copy both of these, control D and move it down. Come over here and you wanna flip this vertically. Select your rectangle on the inside again, hit the letter B. B is going to stand for bottom alignment. It's what we talked about in the last tutorial when we were actually making the uh, things to do and the menu board. I'm just going to select and I'm going to quickly align this to the left and then align the other one to the right. Okay, so now we are ready to do our first frame cut. As you will see, it is slanted inwards going this way on this side and then it's slanted inwards going this way on that side and the same thing for the bottom. You want to make sure that you get your tops together and your sides together when you do it. So don't do a top over here and then try to do a side over here because it's just not going to work in Lightburn. So the next thing that we want to do is select all of our little blue triangles here and we are going to group them all together. You can also hit control G on your keyboard to group them that way. Since we wanna keep our frame shape, that's going to be the shape that we select next. So we're gonna select that, then on our keyboard, we're gonna hit shift and we're gonna select all of these triangles. We had to group these triangles together because if you were to try to do it um, just one at a time, it would not highlight the Booyan difference for you because you can only Booyan difference two shapes at a time, which is why we had to turn these two shapes into one shape and we had to group these shapes over here to make them appear as one shape in order for us to be able to do this. So now we're gonna go over here to Booyan difference. Boom, now we have the top of our frame, and we have the sides of our frame. Now I'm gonna show you guys how fast you can do this. I'm not gonna talk through this next section. I am just going to do all of the steps for you the same exact way, just to show you guys exactly how fast you really can get it accomplished. I make custom frames for all of my signs. Um, I do have certain frame sizes that I have saved that I can use now for easy reference, but if somebody wants a sign that I don't offer or they want a size or something like that, it is really easy to come on in here and just quickly make what they need or make a frame to match the sign that they need. If you were to buy frame files, you would be buying frame files forever, or you're going to limit the amounts of frames that you can offer or the sizes and the styles, etc. cetera. Um, so I just, I don't personally recommend that. I would much rather you learn how to miter your own frames so that you can do it yourself and become more independent in your laser journey. Uh, while it is great to support other designers, when it comes to mitered frames, that's one of those things that like, you know, if you want a nine by 12 and they're only offering a 10 by 10, which would be a perfect square, um, that's just not gonna work for your needs. So this right here is just gonna show you another alternative that you can use. And as you can see, this is going very quickly. Left, bottom, grab this, boom. Oh. All right, I select them all and then I actually hit control. 
I hold down control and then I left click. So I'm only left with the items that I want to group now. So then I've got those control G. I'm going to group those together, select the outside frame, select the little triangles and boom. Now we have our center. So what we need to do is I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to hit the little man like two times because I have two shapes here. And that's just going to ungroup all of these for me so that I can now delete these middle parts that I don't need anymore. And as you can see, we now have a frame. So if I was to grab my on the menu, oh, control D to duplicate it, I'm going to control G to group it together just so I don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to take my frame and we're going to use those same alignment tools. So select your frame, shift and hold shift and then uh, left click. Then you're going to do B and C. So you can get a bottom uh, center alignment. Select the other uh, one, we'll do T because this is the top part of the frame and C. And then we're gonna select our left portion of the frame, select um, the actual menu board and we're gonna do L. And this time in order to center it, we're gonna press the letter E and that is going to horizontally center it for us. So then we wanna go ahead and do the same thing for the right side. So we're gonna do R and then we are going to hit E on our keyboard. And as you can see, when you zoom in, this is now a mitered frame for you. And all you have to do is just take it off the frame. I like to set mine up like this. It's where they're really close together. And then I just send it to cut. And the great thing about making your own frames is now I have a frame in this aspect ratio. So if I wanted to, what I could do, and I just um, rotated that 90 degrees by using the arrow keys on my keyboard next to the M. Um, not the arrow keys that we use for our directions, but the little pointer arrow keys that we have. So take all of these, I'm gonna hit left so that I left align it, and then I'm gonna grab my things to do board over here. And I'm gonna duplicate this one because I wanna keep this. So this will be my on the menu. And then say I want my things to do board to be smaller than my on the menu board because I just don't need a huge things to do. So then I will take it with the frame selected, select all of it together. Did I make my things to do board crooked at some point? What? Oh, okay, there we go. Go back, control D real quick. Select it all together and now let's lock our aspect ratio because I do want it to maintain the exact same aspect ratio. If you were to skew this, like say we were to go out like this, it also skews the lines and so then your frame would not work any longer. So you do have to always lock it when you want to resize something for your frame. And let's just say I want to have a six inch things to do board. And it's that simple. Now this frame is going to be slightly thinner. So this one is only going to be 0.2 and that's because we sized it down. And this frame right here is going to be 0.4 like we made it to be. If you wanted your frame to be the exact same at the smaller size, you would just repeat the same stuff that we did for the on the menu board. And then you would have a frame that is tailor made for this particular size. I personally don't mind having a smaller frame, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. So we'll go ahead and get all of this cut and I will see you guys back in a minute. <sighs> okay, so that wasn't so hard, was it? You, you tell me, right? No, <laughs> just playing. I know that that was super, super easy for you guys. And if you don't get it right the first time, don't stress it and don't worry about it. Go back, watch the video again, try it a couple more times and you'll get the hang of it. And once you get the hang of it, Oh, the doors will open and you can make all kinds of cool and amazing things. One thing I do want to mention, there was a comment on my last video regarding Mac users and the fact that your keyboard shortcuts are different than PC keyboard shortcuts. I did do a little research and I wasn't able to find the hotkeys for Mac. Uh, Lightburn never actually has, to what I've been able to find, they haven't actually released any hotkeys for their program, like in a nice, easy to find place. The hotkeys that I found before were found in the Lightburn forum. Um, I did look in the Lightburn forum, but I didn't see anything that extensive as the list that I posted for the PC. So, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want you guys to be able to follow along and watch and do the things that I'm doing. I use a PC though, and if I can't access the shortcut keys to tell you what they are, and I don't have a Mac to actually be able to test and trial and error, 
it's just not something that I can really help you troubleshoot but this is the internet okay and I know that there are some awesome amazing laser people watching this right now who use Lightburn and who have a Mac so if you yes you are that awesome amazing person why don't you drop something below and just at least give the Mac users a couple of these little shortcut keys or whatever I know that they are in Mac because of course <laughs> um but in order for them to be able to have it in an easy to access place that'd be awesome so without any further ado because now i'm just rambling on <laughs> uh, i hope you guys learned something today i hope you guys enjoyed your time with me and uh, i hope you come back and you put these together with me and we can actually laser something yeah <laughs> I have way too much fun in my garage by myself. Uh